Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of the Dennis Farms Edit to Autumn Oaks. Last time we did a bit of a live stream. We had a lot of different issues during the uh, live stream, but uh, essentially we did a lot of grass cutting uh, since all of our grass was ready to be mowed. And uh, that's mostly now drying out and uh, waiting to be uh, raked up in, create some hay bales here. But we've got just a little bit of odd work to do here around the farm still before we're ready to move forward. We did get our planter all hooked up here. And so that's sitting out here all ready to go. Uh, not quite ready to plant corn yet. But we do have some rocks that we need to pick up here out in uh, one of these fields. We plowed up uh, the, one of these strips back here, and there's just a few rocks everywhere. In the previous episode, before our live stream, we'd mowed a bunch of grass as well. And you can see it really clearly over here if we get out of the tractor. I didn't realize that the grass was so wet, so we were actually mowing wet grass. So this is still grass over here versus this is the semi-dry grass texture. So I'm not sure, I can't recall how Seasons works. I know the semi-dry is going to dry into hay automatically. What I don't know is if the wet grass is going to dry into semi-dry or if that needs to be tedded. My recollection with Seasons is that uh, if it's in the darker green texture there, I have to run a tedder over it in order to convert that to grass or to semi-dry grass. I'm not sure that I want to go through that work because we've got so much grass right now and I don't think we're going to need that much hay to be honest for our animals this year since we're going to gradually add them in over the course of the year here. So we're going to focus on picking up these rocks and we're going to let time uh, kind of answer this question for us. We'll definitely find out here as we move forward today because we have a really good drying potential if we look at the map here. I guess not really good, but okay drying potential uh, between right now and the evening and then also uh, the next day here. So we're going to we're going to answer this question here pretty quickly, I think. Now, I'm still remembering all the key commands for using the auto load and I can't recall it's right control L is the key that I have for automatically scooping up the rocks. And then L will lock that container again. So I'm just making sure we don't lose all of our rocks here as we move around the field and scoop them up. I think there was one more down here at the end of the field here. So this has been kind of an interesting mod to play with to try and remember where some of these rocks are after you're done doing your tillage. Because if I miss one and hit it with the uh, planter later on, I am going to do damage to my planter now with the updates to the mod, which I thought was a really cool touch. And so this is the only field left that we have to pick any rocks in right now. Uh, and so we've got just a little bit more to go up and around the curve here on the top part of this. And we should be all done with this part of uh, our chores for the day. I think before next season, we may look at dialing down the amount of rocks that it's kicking up by... Um, you know, maybe 10, 20% less. I feel like we've got just a few more rocks than I would expect uh, in a field this size, but not too many. It's pretty close. And uh, that's one of the things that I really like about how Thundar set this mod up is that it's completely customizable so you can uh, set this up however you want. I'm really looking forward to the first time that a modder starts using a, a mod like this in his uh, maps automatically. It's going to be a a uh, pleasant surprise for people, I think, or an unpleasant surprise, I guess, depending on how you feel about picking rocks. But it is definitely uh, bringing the realism a little bit here. And so this is going to be a lot of fun. And I was worried when I installed it that it was going to be too time consuming, that there'd just be too many rocks to deal with, or that it would feel, I don't know, kind of monotonous. But I think it... You know, honestly, it's uh, not been that bad, so I'm liking it. It probably helps that we're playing on a smaller map, too, and so we're uh, not overburdened by the number of rocks or the size of our fields for remembering where things are at. 
And uh, with all those rocks picked up, we're going to head on back up to the farm and get that dumped out. And then I think we're pretty much ready to move up here into the end of mid spring here. We are running on nine day seasons on this save. And so each, uh, each segment of a season is going to get three days. So we have one more day of mid spring here. And then in late spring, we're going to be able to start planting our corn. And so what I'm really curious to see is if our grass dries into hay here uh, tomorrow and we're going to be raking up our hay or if we're going to be uh, jumping forward another day and getting our corn planted uh, before we get around to raking the hay. So well, there we go. We're dumping the rocks in the rock pile here and we've got that job all squared away. I do have to say I'm enjoying this uh, 6420. This is a great mod by Dennis Farms with the uh, appropriate front loader and everything designed for this tractor. So it's uh, been a lot of fun. And I think we're going to store this in the main garage shed here for the time being. We've got lots of storage room in the uh, on the farm here. And at some point, I suspect we'll be adding some more equipment to the farm. But for the time being, we're in a pretty good spot. If we take a quick look at our animal menu here, you can see we've got plenty of food here for our heifers that are grazing. So we've moved time forward into mid spring and we're just kind of keeping an eye on our grass here. It's not uh, drying out yet, neither the semi dry or the wet grass. So we're going to just keep watching it. Uh, ground is wet here from the morning dew. We're getting into the afternoon though, so hopefully things start drying out here and we're just going to keep an eye on it if it dries before it starts getting dark we'll jump out here and rake some hay otherwise we'll be uh getting set up to do some planting here in the late spring all right we've moved ourselves into late spring here our ground temperature is still just a little bit uh chilly here for planting but it's getting close I think we'll probably uh, go ahead and put probably our <clears throat> maybe our silage corn in. Uh, we're going to do silage corn in one field and then normal corn in another. But given that we moved from mid to late spring, I wanted to take a chance to run out here and kind of scout out the fields that we'd already planted, see how our hay's doing. And it looks like we've already got some of our crops starting to pop up here. I want to say this is our triticale. If we look at the map here, nope, this was our rye field. So we've got the rye coming up here through uh, already. And it looks like all of that wet grass is going to deteriorate here with seasons, uh, which is a little bit of a shame because we put so much work into it. But honestly, we've got so much of the other grass that's going to dry out here that I'm not really too upset about it. Let's uh, continue down over here as well. It looks like we've got our alfalfa field here but uh unfortunately it does look like it planted terribly like we uh saw on the mini map so i'm not really sure what happened there but we've got a lot of spots in our alfalfa that just didn't plant correctly here so we may have to reseed that after we do the first cut here i think alfalfa is generally uh, one of those crops that'll continue to regrow like grass but we can't have the field look in that spotty uh, season to season. So we'll take a look at that. And then this down here would be our triticale that's come up. So that's looking uh, really good. So I'm excited about where our crops are at. I'm disappointed that all of that work going into the grass cutting on this side of the farm didn't pan out. But that's how it goes sometimes. I'm okay with that. And quite honestly, if we look at the seasons map here, we need the semi-dry stuff to start drying here right now because we're going to get rain tomorrow. So I really hope that that continues to dry out here as the day goes on so that we can bale some of this grass. It would be a shame to lose all of that due to rain coming in here. And I really don't want to have to buy a tether. That's why we let the rest of that grass go. Let's uh, zip back here to the back of the farm. I do want to take a quick look at that field that we have all the way in the uh, back that we mowed at the end of our last live stream. 
So it looks like this grass field is uh, still drying out as well. And if we've left our mower out here, we're going to have to uh, bring this back up to the farm here as well. I'm glad we came out here. I completely forgot that we left that park there at the end of the live stream. So with our hay still drying out here, we're going to go ahead and grab this planter. I think that we're going to take the chance with the slightly lower ground temperatures and go ahead and start working on getting our corn in here uh, for silage because I really don't want to get into a situation where later in the day we're trying to uh, bale up all of our hay and uh, plant at the same time. That's just not going to work out well for us. And so we're going to do the jobs that we're able to do uh, when we're able to do them. Man, seeing all those spots in that alfalfa is uh, really irking me. I don't know what happened over there. We're going to have to look into that. All the other fields planted successfully, so this is either because I'm on an outdated version of the map or uh, I did something wrong with my cedar. Either way, uh, it's just going to be one of those things that bugs me every time I look over at that field, but we'll get that sorted out before uh, or after we do the harvest. I don't want to lose all of the investment we've done in that so far. And we've got the planter all unfolded here. Let's pop open our HUD. It looks like we're all set up for silage corn. So we're going to plant silage corn in this long strip here. And then uh, we'll do some normal corn in the field next to us because we do need to have both of those available to us for uh, later in the year when we're making feed for our cows. I do like this planter setup quite a bit. It's a good looking mod. And uh, oh, as always, we have forgotten to put our arm down here, so I'm kind of curious to see if that's going to work out for us. It is. I always love when mods have all the bells and whistles. I've gotten a lot of comments in my previous videos asking why I don't just plow these fields together. And uh, the easy answer for that is that's not very realistic. You would definitely have sections like this on uh, farms, depending on what part of the U.S. you're in. Uh, it's designed this way to assist with soil erosion. You know, there's some other thoughts around uh, whether or not some of the crops in between actually grow better when they have a little bit of space in between them. I know in Wisconsin, it's pretty common. I've seen um, that they'll do strips of different kinds of plants right next to each other, not just put uh, grass areas in between them, but rather you would plant, uh, you know, maybe 12 or 24 rows of soybeans right next to you know 24 rows of corn you know and just kind of alternate uh, a planter width or two uh, for each crop and go through a field that way and so there's a lot of different thoughts to how to do that in a real farming and so it's always fun to see some maps try to incorporate those uh, real farm mechanics as appropriate for the geographical area so I think we're going to keep the strips it uh, forces me to do a little bit more work by hand, which isn't always a bad thing. Uh, sometimes I feel like I rely too heavily on mods like Course Play and Auto Drive to do things. And so it's definitely fun to have a change of pace and actually do some of the driving manually here. And, uh, you know, it makes for some good bloopers sometimes as well. Now I'm really starting to get nervous about the grass over here turning into drying out enough to bale as hay already well into noon and it's uh still not turned after having a full day of drying time essentially already and it's always fun to turn around with the trees right behind me with the way the farm sim camera works i suppose we could go in cab here the one thing that i wish is that there was a visual indicator in the cab for when my implement was on. Uh, some mods, you can definitely hear the implement being powered up. You hear the whine of the air blower or something like that. But some of these uh, planters and stuff like this, you're not really sure it's on until you start driving and seeing whether or not you're planting or not. And so that'd be nice uh, for people like me who like to keep the actual in-game HUD turned off but you want some indicator to know whether your implement is functioning. And we forgot to put our arm out again, which is going to be a problem around this curve. Oh, we're going to have some crooked rows too. 
Um, I have to say I do like this uh, mod's interior, although I know some people are going to comment I don't have the simple IC stuff set up, so my steering wheel is uh, too far forward. So I guess it does look a little bit funny in cab because my steering column is uh, in the upright position as opposed to the pulled back position. But if you ignore that small detail, the interior on these tractors is just awesome. I love this mod. I think when it comes to farming and farm sim, my favorite size of equipment for implements is around that 12 to 16 row uh, size. Once you get into some of those bigger planters and cedars, it's a different kind of game. And that's where I really want to start using a lot more automation and stuff, because if I need a db120 to plant my field my field is probably ginormous and i've got a couple of them running and so i'm gonna move up into that automation mindset but i'm loving the size of this map i'm loving the size of the fields on this farm and having the uh 12 row implement here uh for planting and such it just feels perfect for me i'm loving this setup plus it's a good looking mod too so it looks like we've got about one pass left here up on this part. I'm sure we're going to have a little bit on the curves that we're going to need to clean up still as well. But uh, we're making really good progress here on planting. The one thing that we are going to come up a bit short on is uh, fertilizer here. This planter is not set up to apply any type of fertilizer while we're planting, so we will have to circle back up on that at some point in the future now as we get into uh further into the series we're going to be able to spread manure and slurry into our fields uh in the fall here after harvest and get those fertilizer states uh boosted back up but that was unfortunately not an option for us here at the beginning of the year because we're just getting started with the uh animals here we're coming into the final bit here I have to say I was pretty impressed with how uh, closely the width here matched up with uh, three passes on our 12 row planter. So I don't really feel the need to go back and touch up some of the little tiny areas. Um, I, I think it feels uh, realistic to have, you know, just that little tiny bit of dirt in a few places on the edges or in between the rows. Uh, I think a lot of times with farm sim, I get into the mentality that, you know, I have to cover every inch of a defined field area. But uh, in this case, I feel like uh, I don't feel like I need to do that. I feel like I took three passes with my planter and that's what fits into this area. So we're going to get this thing folded up here, uh, make it a little bit easier to drive back up to the farm. I think instead of continuing to drive over all of our field areas i'm going to see if i can sneak out here uh, and get on the road and take it road it back up to the farm here instead we technically don't have an official driveway here but it looks like it's pretty smooth i say as my tractor bounces all over the place here but this is uh looking good and we are going to need to use this again here rather quickly. We're going to need to switch over to planting some regular corn into this big field right up behind the cow pasture here. So I think we're going to park this thing back out here. Uh, we're not going to get it into the shed just yet. But let's take a look at our HUD here. Wow, we didn't use hardly any seed on that little bit. Um, so that's uh, uh, good, I guess. And so we'll get this all set up just so we don't forget and move it over to corn. And we're going to wait and plant our corn a little bit later. I want to space things out and just see what effect that has. Plus, I'm noticing the ground was uh, in a wet state, which honestly doesn't affect anything for planting corn. But... Uh, Typically, I'd probably wait until uh, it was a little bit dried out before we jumped into planting. Now, the fact that we're afternoon and my ground is in a wet state is actually really concerning. Uh, at this point, I'm thinking we're going to end up losing all of this uh, grass that we cut. It's not going to dry out in time for hay, even though it says we're in drying potential here. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. This rain has me really concerned overnight because we've got tons more rain coming as well. So 
even though the grass was ready to cut, the reality is is that uh, spring probably not a great time to try and make hay. Too much uh, wet weather, and uh, we needed to wait for summer when it's going to be warmer and drier. It is finally not uh, wet out anymore, so it is actually drying. But if we're constantly in a state of things getting wet in the morning and then not drying out until mid-afternoon, I don't know that we're making that much progress. So we're going to let this go and check back in here if the grass dries today or move ahead to the middle of late spring. That's all for today. Keterk out. Completely forgot that we left that park there at the end of the live stream. Oh my goodness.